Right, so hey everyone and welcome back to another budget photography video. So it's 2020 and I'm still using the 700D for, well, for YouTube. Why would I do that? Well, it's very simple for a very few reasons and we'll come to them. Now, I have already done a review on the 700D, so we will just go through some of the specs quite quickly. So the Canon 700D is a 1.6 times crop beginner camera with an 18 to 55 millimeter lens. It has 18 megapixels and it fits both EF and EFS lenses. It also has a tilty flippy screen, which is really nice. Sony have only just kind of got that for some reason. I don't know why. Canon have had that for years. I don't know why Sony have only just implemented the tilty flippy screen so that people can vlog with their cameras or at least see themselves when they're out and about. Now, yes, the 5D Mark II doesn't have a tilty flippy screen, so I'm just looking straight down the lens rather than being able to check that I'm in focus and yeah, if I'm even in frame. So the main reason that I actually brought this camera is because, well, it's really cheap, to be fair. You can pick this up for about £500, so roughly the cost of this lens that you're looking at me on now. This whole lens costs the same as this whole camera. Eh, it's down to you what you buy. It's also the fact that it is just so, well, lightweight. It's small, it's compact, and it's not very threatening if I'm out shooting like the 5D is. I mean, I'm shooting with a pretty heavy rig right now. I mean, if I switch this on and actually just start filming here, oh, like that, you can actually see I've got the 5D Mark II just there when this thing wants to focus. But you can see I've got the 5D Mark II just there and I've got the 24 to 105 there. Now, normally that lens is on this camera when I film, but it's not only that, I've got my, obviously I've got my audio, and then I've got this massive tripod, this really thick, heavy tripod that, well, I'm, I, I, it has to come with actually a bag. Hang on, but it's been raining, so I'm kind of sat on it right now, so I don't get wet. Now, the next reason as to why I brought it is because of the color science. Now, yes, here we go. Here come all the hate comments saying, oh, you shouldn't just buy a camera because of the color science. Well, to put it bluntly, because I do film with the Canon 5D Mark II quite a lot of the time, I am actually phasing it out. I'm shooting more with the 700D, but because I like the colors and it's easier to match them in post-production rather than having to get something like a Sony and the Canon 5D and trying to match them in post, it's just easier for me to match the Canon colors with Canon colors. It's just easier to edit on me and yeah. Then there are the lenses. This camera takes EF and EFS lenses. Now, EFS aren't very good. There are a few good lenses, but EF mount, there are lots and lots and lots of good lenses that you can pick up quite cheaply actually. I mean, this lens, yes, it's 500 pounds, but that's pretty cheap considering the fact that when this lens was released, it was nearly a grand. So there is a wide variety of, well, really nice lenses. Now, yes, I can confirm that Canon is stepping away from EF mount lenses. I can't say about EFS. I am going to assume that they are stepping away from EFS as well, but I know for certain that Canon is stopping doing EF mount lenses, which is a bit of a bummer for people like me, but they are moving towards RF glass for the R5, the R6, the RP and stuff like that. So it is a bit of give and take. There are some really nice lenses in the RF range that I've been able to use here, there, but it's, they're still very, very expensive because they are still very, very new. And to be fair, I cannot justify the prices of the cameras and the lenses for myself. So I don't buy them, I don't use them, I don't need them in my eyes. And then there is the video mode. Now, yes, 4K is slowly becoming the standard with 2K phones and 4K tablets, 4K TVs, and lots of other 4K bits and pieces. But for me, 1080p still looks really, really nice and it is still the standard for shooting. TV. 
and, well, most people watch in 1080p. Now, yes, I do upscale my footage because I know that I can upscale to 4K because I know that the bitrate and the data for the 1080p footage is actually there within the data. Now, yes, okay, it doesn't shoot at 4K, but it shoots at 1080p. And it's a really rather nice 1080p. It also has contrast detect continuous autofocus. Now, Canon is really well known for its continuous autofocus. But with the 700D in my experience, I will say it does hunt quite a lot, which is a real shame because this can be really good at autofocus, but there are some occasions of where it cannot autofocus. The only thing that I wish it would do in live view is zebra lines. It doesn't do zebra lines to show you what is in focus, and I really wish it would do that, but it doesn't. That's something I can't change unless I side load something like Magic Lantern, but I'm not going to do that because, well, there's going to be a video on that coming soon. And probably the best thing about the Canon 700D for me is the fact that it isn't a professional camera like the 5D Mark II or the 1DX or the 6D or the R5 or the R6. It looks cheap because, it, well, it, to be frank, it is cheap and it looks unappealing. In other words, it's less likely to get nicked from your backpack. So that's a good thing. I don't really want my stuff nicked because, well, I use it professionally. And for this, even though this doesn't have 4K, I'd rather my stuff not get nicked. Now it does have inbuilt audio recording, which is really nice. Canon audio recordings aren't the best, they're okay, but eh, there's nothing really too bad that I could say about it, but nothing amazing I could say about it. I am currently using one right now for the Canon I'm filming on, but I have got to say probably my biggest problem with this camera is actually, believe it or not, its size, especially around the hand grip, because a lot of the time when I'm holding this, my finger is there and that isn't, that's the comfiest place, but it feels weird to have my little finger down here. When on the 5D Mark II, now yes, this is a lot bigger camera, my hand fits comfortably on the grip, but this, it just, it, it just doesn't fit comfortably. And I don't like that, but it is, it's a beginner camera. Now, another downside to this camera is the fact that no, it is not weather sealed at all. So please, please be careful when you take it outside because it will get wet unlike more professional cameras. Anyway guys, thanks for joining me in this video and I'll see you, see you in the next one.